Oh, goodness. Okay, well, um, good morning, everyone. I think it's probably afternoon, but uh, maybe even evening for you guys. I don't know. Um, it is certainly afternoon in California. So um, I wanted to do another. Um, sorry, I'm just moving my camera. I wanted to do just a follow up. Um, and this time it's so exciting. Well, okay. It's probably exciting for you guys who did math in school <laughs> and were good at it. For me, it's a bit like, oh, do I have to go back to this? But yes, I do have to go back to this because money is at the key, uh, is the key, sorry, to everything um, to do with these mass bailing rescues. Okay, so I just want to, I do again have notes. I'm going to be looking down. You know, sorry about that, but um, I am not a, necessarily a natural at this, so I'm hoping to get better. Um, so, first thing I wanted to say is, and this is something that has been said by many, many people, you have not saved a horse from slaughter when you give up your hard-earned money to the mass bailing rescue. In fact, you've probably made things worse. Um, and I just wanted to hear, do a little bit of math for you, just so you can try and understand the money side of this, because that is what it's all about. So, this year, 2024, wholesale horse meat prices that were shipped from the United States are between... 0.63 and two dollars and twenty cents per pound all right per pound on the horse um the retail price so the retail price obviously all right is when it's sold on to the meat um the people the, the the people who buy the meat from the suppliers in mexico canada um countries like japan france um and other countries that eat and consume horse meat but also use other parts of the horse for uh, to make other leather goods um there's a name for it for the life of me i cannot remember what it is but I will put it in the comments when I've figured it out. Um, so, oh God, what is it? so 2024, wholesale meat prices from the United States are between, and this was like a month ago, so I don't suppose they've changed that much, uh, 0.63 cents, so 63 cents, up to $2.20 per pound. Kill by, look at the math behind this the kill buyer trader broker is contracted to supply a slaughterhouse in mexico or canada of say 30 30 horses per week for slaughter all right so 30 horses times a thousand pounds per horse equals thirty thousand. okay thirty thousand pound a horse 30,000 pounds times $2.20, which is the highest price, 2020-24, equals 66,000. 66,000 dollars per week. 66,000 dollars times four weeks, one month, equals 200 dollars $2, $2, $2, $2, $2, $2, $2, $2, $2, $2, $2, $2, $2, $2, $2, $2, $2, $2, $2, $2, $2, $2, $2, $2, $2, $2, $2, $2, $2, $2, $2, $2, $
um, say we're looking at, 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 at like five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I don't know. I mean, you can do the math on that one. That's a lot of money. All right. Uh, yes, they have overheads. Yes, they have um, all sorts of other expenses they need. But bottom line, three million one hundred sixty-five thousand dollars. <laughs> so, because I'm a curious sort of person. I watched a uh, quite a high profile auction in, in Texas um, where two or three of the mass bailing rescues raised somewhere in the region of $150,000. One week, okay, one week. To save some wild horses that had been rounded up by the United States Forest Service. Um, <coughs> Missy, um, sorry, my dog that were allegedly going to go to slaughter. Allegedly. Now, these mass bailers were encouraged by some relatively, a relatively large wild horse management charity. Okay, so, now whether you agree or disagree regarding the practice of rounding up those wild horses is, is, is by the government agencies the fact remains that the same large um, advocacy group got involved and then set off panic buttons to thousands of their followers, advocates and donors, asking for money to help save these horses from the traders and potential slaughter. Although there was actually no hard evidence that this was going to happen. They also recruited, I believe, two mass bearing rescues to bid on these horses on site because according to their social media pages, the advocacy group for this particular group of horses were not allowed to place bids. I'm not sure why, but I did contact the Forest Service recording this and I'm still waiting for a reply and that was like nearly two or three months ago so I'm not expecting one right now as you can imagine what ensued and a lot of people know this so I uh, you know a lot was complete and utter chaos the mass bailing rescues were raising money through their live social media feeds as we've spoken about before large well-known advocacy groups became involved and gave their backing to these notorious mass bailing rescues one of which whose ceo could be in the running for an oscar for her uh, heart-wrenching portrayal of, of a grief-stricken animal advocate a few um, of these eventually went to sanctuary i lose that term again loosely a few others went to various other mass bearing rescues um, who, one of which actually, well, no, more than one of, we, uh, one of them, came under scrutiny for not providing care for the horses that they had allegedly rescued. Now, care, I mean, they weren't fed correctly. By care, I mean, there was no transparency. By care, I mean that they were posting false information on social media to their donors. So this is what, you know, when, when we say about, um, when we say about this, follow the money, this is follow the money, okay? Because as I said before in my post, these mass bailing rescues are not only working with these horse traders, they are, it seems now, working with large horse advocacy groups. And if the mass bailing rescues are getting $3 million per week, sorry, per year from 
their contract with the Mexico and Canadian slaughterhouses. And then the mass bailing rescues are raising thousands and thousands of dollars to save these horses. Okay. You can make your own conclusions. It doesn't take much working out. So, the amount of, I, I'm speechless about the amount of money that is, is, is just changing hands. Um, those 30 horses that the kill buyer is sending to slaughter, he's sending to slaughter anyway, as we said before. These particular horses, were, they were never going to go there. There was way too much publicity about it. Never going to go to slaughter, okay? But the rhetoric, again, was if you don't donate, they are going to definitely end up on that slaughter track. Um, and this is where the scam is. I just can't even... I, I, I mean, I, I personally have had, when I've questioned this, I've had people say things like, well, I don't care where my money goes as long as that horse is safe. Or, well, at least someone saved that horse. What did you do? Uh, directed at me. Uh, and all this does is defend and perpetuate an industry that is based on lies and deceit. Now, as I said before, the kill buyers are a business, all right? They're in it to make money. Nonprofits, they're not into it for make money. They're into it to provide a service. They're into it to stand by their mission. I'm gonna let you draw your own conclusions and um, sign off for now. But I'm going to be saying more and more about this because the filings, IRS filings on some of these rescues will blow your mind. And that's it. I'm going to wait until next, in the next couple of days because I have some other little things I want to talk about too. And that is tracking the, the, the mass bailing rescues tracking or in a lot of cases not tracking the horses they save and <laughs> putting up pictures or photographs online of a horse that they saved posting it after photograph of that horse that they saved with the timeline that is way, way too short. And then when you start scrutinizing those photographs, really scrutinizing, they're not the same horse. Somebody said to me, well, when you have that many horses under your care, it's very easy to find a horse that looks very similar to the one that you're doing the before photograph for. Not quite, so they put the two, one photograph, another photograph. Yeah, at first glance, yeah, they look alike. So next time I do this, I'm gonna be addressing that and I'm gonna be showing photographs and I'm gonna be pointing out as to what the differences are. And then undeniable. Anyway, that's it. I've rambled more than, oh my gosh, I've been on here for 22 minutes. I'm gonna stop rambling and get on with what I do better what I really want to do, and that's, whoops, where is he? Where are you, Shiloh? Shiloh! I don't know where he is, where is he? Oh, no, that's me. Where have you gone? Shiloh, look at the camera. This is my horse here, actually. Here he goes. Whatever. There. And that's it. Thanks so much for watching. Please, any questions, if you could do them, I mean, you can do them on, on, on TikTok, but also it would be really nice if you could just, um, email us too um, and that way I, it's so much easier for me to collate and get people to help signing off <laughs> enjoy the rest of your day thanks bye bye